All right, what's up guys? VV back with another video. And in today's video, guys, I'm going to be doing a little bit of the same style video as yesterday where I, I talk a little bit about news, I talk a little bit about the meta, and then I show you guys a game at the end of the video. I do like the layout of this form of video, but I will say it's it's just been kind of a boring time right now as far as One Piece goes. Nothing nothing crazy new to, to report back with you guys on. I've been a little busy at school, so I haven't been able to do too many theory crafting videos. So you guys know what you're getting into today, more of an update style video, but we got some cool stuff to talk about still, so don't worry. And, and at the end of the video, we're going to watch uh, two games of Black, Yellow, Lin Lin. Just two fun games, nothing crazy, nothing groundbreaking or, you know, no, nothing like that. Okay, so first up, over on the Asian website here, on the uh, asia-en.onepiece-cardgame.com website, they have released this statement here. So this is going to release for them over in July 13th of 2024. Let's not worry about the date, but I really want to look at what they said here. This has to be some type of a uh, this has to be some type of a, um, a mistranslation or a mis <laughs> a misunderstanding on my part. But listen to what it says here. The most prominent leaders are now back in six different colors. New starter decks are now coming. I love this idea, by the way. Let, let me explain. I don't like the idea of the different colors. Well, I don't know. I'd be okay with the different colors, but I don't think that's what they meant. Because check this out. ST15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. It looks like they have them all coming out. But it says right here they're going to be the colors they normally are. So why does it say six different colors? And if, and if anyone knows, by all means, please hit, you know, hit me up in the comment section below saying, hey, here's what it really meant. Maybe it's a mistranslation. If someone reads the actual you know, standard version, or how do I say this? I'm on the English Asian channel. If, if anyone's on like the standard Asian um, Japanese language channel and it, and it has a different translation, you know, please report back to us and tell us what's going on because this just does not make sense that, that they'd be in different colors after saying what the, the color is right here in the product name. Now, one thing I want to mention though is this. This would be an, I'm not saying they're, hear me out guys, what I'm about to say, I'm not saying they're going to do this, but I think it would be a, it would be a really nice opportunity for them to do this. Okay. It would be really nice if they used this opportunity to reprint, reprint cards that are really hard to come by. Like, what if in the Smoker deck, what if one of the secret rares in there, or excuse me, not secret rares, what if one of the SRs, the super rares, was Borsalino? I'm just saying, wouldn't that be nice? What if in the Katakuri, one of the super rares, or yeah, yeah one of the super rare slots, by the way, in, in these starter decks, usually there are two super rares per... Um, per super rare. There's usually two different, this is confusing, there's usually two different super rares and they're at a quantity of two each, if that makes sense. So what if two of them were the eight cost Katakuri? And like with Smoker, what if two of them were Borsalino? What if two of the purple Luffy one down here was Queen? And so on. Like Blue Dofi maybe would have that promo Jinbei no one can get their hands on. You know, that's, well, I, I don't want to say no one can get their hands on it, but it's very rare because it's promo. For Green Uda, wouldn't that be nice if they printed Nami in here? The three-cost Nami Film Searcher? That'd be nice. I don't know about for Red, Edward Newgate. Maybe that'd be like a Radical Beam or something. You know, just little reprints here and there. Uh, but, but again, I don't know what's going on where it says six different colors. Whoever knows, please tell me. But otherwise, I really hope they use this opportunity to reprint these leaders. You know, with alternate art versions like what you see on here. And be able to reprint some cards that are very, very hard to come by, like like the three cost Hinas and things like that. That'd be an amazing opportunity for them, and I really hope they take advantage of it. Not saying they will, I just hope they do. And one more thing I want to say on that is, think about it like this. This would be a great product to put out to help new players come into the game, because if you already have all of these cards as a, you know, a player like me who's been playing for, you know, <laughs> all this time, you don't need any of these cards. Unless you just want to get them for the uh, for the alt arts, you know that would be that would be one reason to buy it, assuming there'd be alt arts in it. But like this would be good for the new players, and old players wouldn't have to worry about spending more money on the game. I just think that'd be a really great uh, thing for the game. Okay, so next up, there's not a lot going on. So this is OP06. Th this hasn't been updated since the 24th, and I'm recording this on the 27th. So you know no nothing new is really going on as far as like in the west and the east. I check OnePieceTopDecks.com every single day, guys. So whenever a new deck pops up, I'm on it immediately. And we already looked at this in the, in the last video, so we won't spend much time on this. But over on EggmanEvents.com, um, there has been something new since I last hopped on here and checked it out. This 401 Games Toronto Regionals. And I just wanted to highlight this one because there's a lot of variance in all the different colors represented in this tournament's top eight. Or uh, top 16, excuse me, see down here. Check this out, guys. Okay. Four Charlotte Katakuri, four Sakazuki, two Gekko Moria, two Yamato, two Anel, and two Vinspoke Reiju. 
that that's not bad. Uh, 386 player tournament. That's kind of hey, it, it's funny to say, but that's kind of a small turnout for for the one piece tournaments. Um, but that's still a a very large tournament. That's a really good turnout. Um, and this is just a 401. Oh, excuse me, it is a regional. So that is kind of a small turnout for a regional because let's look at some of these others like Magna. Uh, excuse me, Carta Magica's online regional, 961 players. Uh, this No Heroes Krefeld regional, 734. That's a weird number. I wonder. I wonder. You guys tell me what y'all think in the comment section below. Is One Piece losing a little bit of its steam? Is it starting to slow down a little bit? Because because I think most people on here are used to seeing the decks completely maxed out with numbers, right? Like completely rounded off. 506 players, tax uh, online regional, 487. Like these are still extremely big turnouts. 128 player, this was just a, oh, just a box tournament, excuse me. Uh, but here's an online case tournament. Uh, We'll look at this one, and that's it anyway. 256 players. So that one looks like it capped out at 256. And then the um, the other one that we just looked at, the box tournament, looks like it capped out at 128. That's what we like to see. But when you look at OP05, okay, let me go down a little bit. So here's a treasure cup, 924, online, another treasure cup, 411. So I guess maybe it has been like that. I just haven't noticed. But I feel like most of the One Piece tournaments just completely cap out. 460. Yeah, okay, so these are just all kind of random numbers case tournament let me look at this treasure cup one this will be the last one i look at 512 that's what i'm used to seeing where it's like these increments of like 128 256 512 1020 uh 1024 i think i think that's it y'all help me out if i'm off on that but yeah very very interesting stuff here or even like the north american finals right where it's like 2,000 players that's that's what i like to see for one piece okay so that's a little bit for the meta nothing too crazy there we're gonna hop into the game now and i'll show you guys the deck list afterwards Whoops, there we go. Uh, let me turn the volume off, put it on 2x speed, and we'll just get right into this. Hopefully the quality remains good. I think I was able to fix it, guys, because I know that was a big problem before. There we go. So this first game here, going against a Magellan, this is OP06. And there's a weird glitch going on in the sim right now where it will not let me play Reject on the OP06 sim. Like, that's only supposed to be banned in OP07. Maybe I need to update my client or something. I'll have to check or, like, re-download re it. Maybe there was an error. But, yeah. Okay, so anyway, this guy here, uh, I hit him with a... Hang on, we got to back up a little bit here. Okay, pause. So this guy comes in with a, with a Mino Chihuahua here for 5K rush. And I take it because I, I 2K'd out of his leader swing. And then we rip a Thunderbolt off the top. That was supposed to be a reject. So now I'm starting to think, like, hey, maybe maybe Thunderbolt's better for what I'm trying to do with the deck. We'll have to see. It all it all requires playtesting. And especially since I'm already using Hiyori's, right, where I can set them if I need to. So anyway, so this is so Magellan here, I don't know what this guy was doing playing it. This was just a, I got two fun games for you for Black Yellow Lin Lin. Um this one this one for, by Mag, uh, against Magellan. And then the next map match is gonna be against Anel. So I will share this list at the end. I think I'm starting to figure out a good black yellow Lin Lin list. Because for the time being, guys. Black Yellow Luffy does not come out for about two more weeks, and even still, you're not going to have access to the 2K County you really need with him. I play out Gecko Mori there, establishing Kikinojo, and uh, I'm feeling pretty good about this board state, because guess what? Next turn, I'm just dropping Tenlin, and when he swings life, I get a Kikinojo trigger off the top. We'll, we'll take it every time. Kikinojo, guys, is so good. Like, like the card, it is really nice for us in Black Yellow Linlin, because we actually do go through quite a bit of life cycling, and I am already running like a little 12 card package for Lanawano, running four Hiyoris, four Kikinojo, and four Momonosuke. So I'm feeling just fine about that. So this guy right here, I bait him into giving me his entire hand because he's trying to save his board. It's like swing five into it. Okay, give me a 1K. Swing six into it. Give me a 2K. Six more into it. Now he's starting to think like, ah, maybe I shouldn't have done that, right? Swing nine into his Magellan. And then I play out Lin, Lin At this point of the game, it's over. Yeah, and he does quit out. Let me pause it real quick and we'll talk about it. it it's over here. Like there's nothing he can do. I'm at three life. He can play out that nine calls Kaido all he wants to. Next turn, I just run him over, right? It's like swing seven. I guess, you know, he would not even be able to use Hell's Judgment because he played out Kaido. Or if he doesn't play out Kaido and say he like tries to draw with Queen, number one, look at what he's drawing. It shows us in the sim here. He'd be drawing another Kaido and whatever the card is under it, I can't see. Uh, it's just, he's in a bad spot. I've got two 2 Ks coming out of my life and a Borsalino blocker. I've got another Gecko Mori in hand. And if I need to, I'm just going to keep gaining life. Just nonstop. I'm going to gain one life a turn, eat up his board. If he tries to ever take up my Kikinojos, it's game over for him. So that was a nice game. Magellan's at an interesting place. The, the hardest time I've ever had against Magellan is when they get the five-cost Magellan early on. So, okay. So that's that one. 
let's go on to the next game. This one's a little bit, uh, a little more interesting. Let me make sure it's on 2x speed for you guys. There we go. So this one, uh, like I said, a little more interesting. Sorry, guys. I do have to adjust this right here. Oh, look at that, man. I already forgot for the first game. I forgot to move my face. Okay, restart the video. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, we're good now. We're good. So it gets to Nell here. He doesn't. He does get a Shura from the start, and he got an Ohm off the search. I'm like, oh, that you know that stinks. Oh well, you, you do what you gotta do. I swing five at life. I'm hoping he'll let me, you know, get get one life on him in case he attacks enemy and I get a Kikinojo trigger. Doesn't happen that way. I get him down. He, he counters out. He's at five five cards in hand. So I actually pay out Perona as a as a four cost five K body that makes you trash a card. In one of my videos coming up soon, I have it planned. I just haven't had the chance to flesh out the idea and fully record it. I, I'm going to be talking about cars like Perona, Gecko Moria, cars that have like extremely high value, like cars that have a high impact when you play them, or maybe not necessarily a high impact, but they just have high value. But we'll, we'll talk about that later. Okay, swinging in five. He, he played out Ohm, the Ohm Holy package. He, he did not get Holy off the search, by the way, which was nice. He had the Holy already in hand. So I'm going to swing five at life when he has three cards in hand. Okay, he takes it. I'm swinging five more at life here, and I'm going to I'm going to get rid of that Ohm with Brook. Brook has been pretty nice. I'm not going to lie. Brook has been pretty nice. It just it kind of helps having him in the deck, period, if you're going against Gecko Moria, or if you're going against Sakazuki, or if you're going against Reiju, and last but not least, Nami. It just kind of has great utility. It's a 6 cost 6k. It can do all, all kinds of shenanigans. So I do I give him a 1k counter here, by the way. He swung 5 into that after a 3 dawn investment. So I, I said, okay, he had to invest 4 dawn into taking that card out. I'll give it to him. He attacks into me. He gets hit. So he got a Santori, I'm sorry guys, I got to pause it. He got a Santori trigger uh, on his last turn, the five cost uh, 2K, the 2K counter, five cost 5K. So I got a Thunderbolt off the top again. I'm starting to really like that that card in this deck. I'm not saying it's better than Reject, by the way, but I think it um, it's pretty nice so far from my limited playtesting in OP06 with Lin, Lin Swing five and a two, there's no way he's going to counter out of this. Like this thing's just dead, right? And... That thing's gone. Then I swing uh, seven into five. Again, there's no way he, he pulls out of this. But then guess what, guys? The worst possible thing happens. My internet turns off. So now we got to do a little bit of brainstorming on what happens next. Um, my, my internet's been kind of like on and off today. But so like I said, guys, it just plays out. I'm just letting it play out. The It, it just com it completely, my internet turned off. Now, it says you win, but I don't think that's right. I don't think he left there. Maybe he did leave. Because if I take his uh, guy there, I'm playing out, what, next turn? Or right after that, I'm playing out. I have uh, seven Dawn left. I could play out my uh, four-cost Kikinojo and my three-cost Fukuro. Maybe he did leave. I don't know. But I know directly after this game, I lost internet connection. And it makes me think that it happened during the game. However, let's talk about that turn there. That dog is probably going away. unless I mean, he had one Dawn active. Maybe he L-Thors it. I don't know. But it doesn't matter. If he wants to throw that dog, I'm fine with it. Because I'm putting down a Fukuro, and I'm putting down a Kikanojo, and he's at two life, where I don't have to worry about him, like, tapping down my card and throwing down a nail and just, like, running me over. And then after that, after that turn, if he does not deal with my board or, or somehow win the game against me, I'm dropping 10 lens, or I'm going to gain life with uh, my, my leader effect and play out my Kikanojo, or my, excuse me, my Momonosuke. Now I start getting a life loop, life loop with my leader effect. Kikinojo and Momonosuke, and I've got Tin Lin anytime I need it. So I was feeling pretty confident I was going to win that game, and I still think that, generally speaking, Black Yellow Lin Lin is still very fav favorable into a Nell. That could be me, I don't know. You know, you can never tell too much from the Sim, but I'm just telling you guys, from my experience, Black Yellow Lin Lin is extremely favorable into a Nell. Right, guys, that's it for today. Sorry how that last that last um, game ended. That was unfortunate. Oh, let me give you guys the deck list real quick. I know people love that. I'll try to list it down in the comment section below as well. This is the list that I'm running. Uh, let me move my head real quick one more time. I think that this deck is really good. I, I need to do more playtesting with it. I think that it any deck that runs black automatically got better with OP06 because now you have access to Gecko Moria. And I would argue that any deck that is running yellow automatically got better because now you're at least running Hiyori and Kikinojo, right? Generally speaking. And then for black yellow, we can also run the Momonosuke card and get full value from that with our leader effect, gaining life, gaining life with Kikinojo, and so on. So, and, oh, and reject. I forgot to mention reject. <clears throat> I haven't worked out the, <clears throat> excuse me, I haven't worked out the full package yet for like how many 
you know, I'm running four Thunderbolts right now because it would not let me run Reject on the Sim. I'm not sure what that's all about. But I think Thunderbolt is extremely powerful. Reject, 200 million volts of Maru. You're just going to have to kind of spin it however you need to, to to make it work. Because I don't I don't know how else to do otherwise, right? Like, there's there's really no telling on, on what's the best combination of cards. And the Sim's not even letting me test it right now, unfortunately. I like the two Sabos. It's like, okay, I like and I don't like Sabo. I'm just going to say it like that. I like the fact that Sabo can like be used in utility ways to fill up your trash, you know, cycle through cards, give your board protection, and it's a five cost, which is very important to the yellow uh, decks because they can't tap it down with 200 million volts of Maru. But then I don't like the card sometimes when it's like, okay, I've got like four cards left in my hand, and now it's just not as good, you know, because because that card's really good when you've got like seven or eight cards in hand, you've got plenty of options to pick from, and this deck does have good options to pick from. There's there's a lot of cards in here that are that are bricks in hand, right? We've got uh, four Linlin, -Lin, four Kikinojo, four Momonosuke, four Gekko Mori, and four Brook. That's, what was that, 20 cards, I think? Four, eight, tw 12, 16, 20. And then technically Thunderbolt, that's a little bit different, but basically 20 cards that are dead in hand. So the card has a purpose, and if not, we need to put in the six king pistol or you're the one who should disappear, the zero cost um, event triggers or event counters. But yeah, I, I think... That, so again, I have a love-hate relationship with Sabo. I think the card is extremely good, but there are other times where I, it's like I wish this was anything else in my hand. Some some type of card with an on-play effect that deals with my opponent's board, almost like even like a Sakazuki or something. Um, but not necessarily. I'm just saying something like that because it also isn't something we can really get tons of value from with Rebecca. Like Rebecca, we can get a card back from our grave or from our trash throw out a Fukuro. That's why I have Fukuro in the deck now, so I at least have some target with Rebecca's, you know, on play. You can technically throw out uh, Suru, but I, I don't recommend it. I don't know. Maybe maybe there is a, a play where you go, okay, play Rebecca, snag Brook from your trash, play out Suru with, with Rebecca's effect, and then play out your Brook and hit a six or less with his effect, the, the uh, trash effect. Something like that. We'll have to see. Uh, it's still in testing, guys. I'm still working it out, seeing what we can do with it, but notice the direction I've gone with Black Yellow Linlin. I've almost completely gone away from removal. It's like now nowadays, it's all of, it's all about just winning the board. Like just play these huge characters like Gecko Moria, Charlotte Lin Lin, cards that get the, the dual value like with Rebecca and Gecko, like how they just get extra cards, and then just let's just block out, block out, block out, and just gain life, gain life, gain life. That's that's my game plan. Just full blocks, lots of two K counters. Notice I'm running twelve. I got four Perona, four Suru, four Hayori, and then tons of blockers, and then just straight up. Uh, bosses, Geckos, and Charlotte Linlands. So, yeah, I'll keep you guys updated on this because y'all know I never let this deck go. I will say, once Black Yellow Luffy comes out, I'll probably be taking a very big break from it. And specifically, Black Yellow Luffy with EB01 because you have to have Flampy, in my personal opinion, which comes out with EB01. You could play without it, obviously, but it, but it just won't be quite as good. Flampy is a massive card in that deck. Because it's a one cost draw too, and, and it takes your life away in the process. It's just massive. So, I right, guess I'm done rambling. Hope you all enjoyed. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you have not already. If you got any questions, comments, please put them down below. And until next time, guys, peace.